Hey y'all, I'm Jules. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me as always is the Spirit Doctor Kelly Sparta. What's up, Panama Kelly? Hey, hey, hey. We are in <laughs> the dry season, the, the windy season, summer in Panama right now. And um, it, there's, there's a lot to be said for it. The sunsets are amazing. The weather is stunningly beautiful and sometimes really, really windy. Um, but I could do without the, the hand-sized spiders. <laughs> well, are they like yeah. a cousin of mother spider? You know, <laughs> cause well, that's one of your spirit guides. <laughs> yeah, she's coming to visit and I'm, you know, I'm okay, but she can't be in my bedroom. So we had to take no. the one that was coming into the master bath and be like, okay, you're too close to the bedroom now. You got to go outside. So, okay. So like how big are these spiders? Are they like hand size? Well, palm sized. Palm so, size. That's, that's like tarantula hand. size. Yes. But yeah. it's not a tarantula. So okay. I'm still trying to figure out what it is. But, you know, she told me she wasn't poisonous and like dangerous. So, you know, I was like, okay, I believe you. Um, and then we had a grasshopper come to visit, massive grasshopper uh, come to visit. Was that the thing on your wall on the video? Yeah, it was the thing on my wall. And oh my God. I'm like, what is this thing? Colors. Yeah. All Sucker was huge. Colors. Massive. Yeah. All the people from Panama who follow my TikTok were like, don't kill it. It's a grasshopper. It's good luck. It's good luck. And I'm like, okay. And so it stayed and visited with us for like three days. And that was really cool. Um, oh my gosh! But yeah, they, they they grow the insects bigger here. <laughs> <laughs> so some yeah. things are bigger in Panama. Some things are bigger in Panama. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. So we're we're having fun. Um, but I'm oh, it's so beautiful here. I love it. Oh, did you? Very cool. Uh uh. We just got a big boom of thunder. We we rarely get thun. We rarely get rain here during the during the dry season. Um, and it rained earlier today, and so I didn't think we would be getting anything else, and it just went boom over my head. So <laughs> we're going to be getting some more rain. I don't know if you guys are going to hear it or not, but hey. <laughs> That's <laughs> okay. Yeah. See, the Thunder Gods are excited about our guests today. That's it. They're like, That's we're going to be talking about some really cool stuff. Yes. And Because we, we have a very cool guest. We do. Um, we do. We, his name is Derek Loudermilk. And he is a quantum business coach, creator of the LEAP, L-E-A-P method. Um, he is a host of a top-rated podcast called The Derek Loudermilk Show, a four-time best-selling author, uh, superconductors, revolutionize your career and make big things happen, activate your life, better business book. And um, he is out of St. Louis, Missouri. Um, he has coached some global influencers. <laughs> leading scientists, cutting edge entrepreneurs, billionaires, world record athletes, thought leaders. You know, you need to strive to do better in life. I'm just I'm, saying, you were just lazy. That's all there is to it. Jeez. <laughs> okay, but wait a go. There's more. And then he has his work has been featured in over 100 publications and podcasts globally. Um and he's a former pro cyclist, extreme microbiologist turned professor professional adventurer and but wait for it today he's going to be talking about um because you're still not achieving enough right he is on a quest to learn a hundred metaphysical esoteric healing techniques oh my gosh oh my god he slices he dices he julian's fries he julian fries <laughs> Jared, you're a badass, hello man. <laughs> hello thank you thank you and that, it's so funny you're talking about these giant spiders. I was just thinking about that yesterday because in dinosaur times, there were giant insects. There were huge insects, uh, you know, like um, roly polies the size of VWs and, you know, just really big bugs. What? And it's because the oxygen levels were so much higher at that point. And, and bugs sort of absorb through their... Um, surface area of their bodies, some of them. And so if you have a lot of oxygen, then you can get bigger insects. And so really that's, that's why they're limited in size right now. 
Um, so maybe with global warming, we'll get, you know, bigger spiders back again. <laughs> well, that's something to look forward to. <laughs> you know, that's not I all I need bad. a bigger swatter, apparently. <laughs> Don't my grandmother spider hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Only, only the spiders that are mean and bite me during the... They bite me when I sleep. Oh, well, uh -oh. she's trying to get your attention. Pay attention to her. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just <laughs> 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 like, oh, duh. Right, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> okay. It's not like I'm oh, pig-headed yeah. or something. Yes. <laughs> I remember that stage where, you know, you're just arguing against everything your guides tell you. <laughs> you just yes. Like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> You can't make me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So Derek, tell us about some of the, the esoteric things that you have learned because I'm assuming that you have not reached your goal yet. I'm getting I'm getting close. I'm 91 out of the way to 100. So again, I think I'll hit it this year. And it didn't it wasn't always a quest. It was just like something I was exploring, figuring out falling in my lap along the way because when I was traveling the world as an adventurer, I was exposed to a lot of these, you know, native shamans or just, you know, go to a holy temple and have some interesting experience. Um, probably the best one, which introduced me to telepathy, it was kind of the one that kicked things off was this 800 year old magic tree, which has these amazing three trunks that come together like a hundred feet up in the air. And when I touched this tree, um, the tree started communicating with me telepathically and then projected my consciousness halfway across the world to show me this desert, basically this forest where the desert was taking over the forest. And the, <clears throat> the message really was, uh, look, we're, we're destroying the earth. You know, these deserts are taking over and it's because you've, you've forgotten to pay attention to the natural world. And so it was kind of like uh, a mission, giving me a mission, you know, to, to bring people back out into the wilderness to reconnect with nature. And that actually ultimately led to, to me creating these retreats. I used to lead a bunch of adventure retreats for entrepreneurs. Um, but it also got me thinking like, how is this possible? How is it that this tree was communicating with me like this? Because as a, as a scientist, I like to investigate, you know, what are the mechanisms underneath this phenomenon? And so that's kind of what I've spent the last seven to eight years doing is just sort of researching on both an experiential level, scientific level, and then also going to meet some of these masters and gurus and shamans and sages all over the world. Come to Panama. We'll we'll do put you in a sound healing with my Kantara sound healing that I do. Oh yeah, this, number ninety two there. Be perfect. <laughs> Come on down. There you go. Besides, you know, there's something magical about Baru here, the the volcano I live on the side of. So oh yeah. There's, there's a an inherent energy here that is just amazing. So, I think anywhere where you can live on a volcano by the ocean is a pretty good, yeah, pretty good place. It doesn't suck. <laughs> yeah. Just, just a way, you know? Yeah. So, so how did you go from scientist, like severe left brain to now spiritual right brain? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. And, and it's, it took actually years to, not be a materialist anymore. I, I often, you know, most scientists still operate <clears throat> under a, a materialist viewpoint. That is like the material world is first and it sort of creates the phenomenon as we perceive them. My understanding now is that consciousness creates the material world. Con consciousness is fundamental and it's sort of a, a byproduct. The physical world is a byproduct of how intention consciousness is applied a densification of thought forms essentially um so that took a long time to sort of unwind uh, that particular belief structure um and the thing that the one that finally sort of the final nail in the coffin i was talking with um oh he's a, he's a neuroscientist what's his name anyway he died and he was totally brain dead and he had this wonderful tour of the afterlife 
Eben Alexander, that's the one. He wrote this famous book, Proof of, Proof of Heaven. Um, and he, and then, so he's this neuroscientist, and he was, had this experience when he was brain dead, and he said, well, that shouldn't be possible. So he started doing all this research, and he realized that it, you know, it's not the brain that creates the phenomenon of memories, and, and memories persist you know, between lifetimes. So there's a lot going on external to our physical body in terms of our consciousness, in terms of our memories, uh, all kinds of things like that. Yes to all of it. <laughs> By the way, the densification, I love that word, the densification. I like form. that. Yeah. So the, 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 if you don't know it, which, you know, given how much study you're doing, I'd be surprised. But in case you haven't walked through alchemy, um, the, the line that is the demarcation, that liminal space between uh, thought and reality is called the archaeus. Hmm. And so it's either spelled A-R-C-H-A-E-U-S or A-R-K-E-U-S, depending on who you look it up by. But it is that, that transition point between thought and form. And so that's the... Oh, cool. Yeah, of course. Of course there's a transition, transition, point. transition point. happens, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I haven't looked looked into alchemy at all. You know, it's like I... I um, <clears throat> I just threw this up on Facebook a few weeks ago. I said, here's, <coughs> excuse me, here's what I've tried so far. Um, any recommendations? And there was like 200 more things for me to try. There's a lot of different techniques for me oh, to yeah. try. <laughs> yeah, there's as many techniques as you, as there are people who have done this for more than 10 years, you know, because inevitably you end up developing your own process because if you do it for any length of time, then it, it becomes this co combination of things that you are good at. And then you take everything you've ever learned from all the people you've ever learned it from, and then you integrate it into yourself with all the things that you're good at, and boom, here's a new mo modality, right? So, yeah. Yeah, we actually, I ended up doing that sort of uh, naturally as well, uh, because I coach entrepreneurs. We took this group healing practice uh, the power of eight healing practice, which is usually used for healing. But one thing I noticed in that practice was the, the rebound effect. So everyone that was sending healing to the recipient tended to experience uh, even more healing themselves. And there's this, this uh, wonderful rebound effect. And I thought, oh, we could probably apply this to, to business. And so we, instead of picking a healing outcome, we pick like a specific business outcome that somebody wants to manifest like an appearance on a podcast or a successful launch or something like that and then we all intend together for it to happen and we notice first of all they've always come true which is amazing perfect 100 percent track record and the other the, the other side is that, is that it seems to um it seems to put people into momentum in their own business as the sender and then um, the other thing it does is it, it gives precognitive information. Uh, oftentimes, it'll, it'll give us insight about who should you partner with for this launch or what are you going to be wearing when you go on TV? You know, these just random bits come to the group. So uh, it kind of taps into that, that non-local awareness that we were talking about earlier. infinity symbol so what comes goes right what goes comes and then you've also got eight as a completion number it's an abundance number so it makes perfect sense that it would be good for this uh, sort of model from a numerological perspective yes I could talk so I'm like mm, 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 I'm chewing on my words <laughs> oh good yeah so and I think there's <laughs> something to when if you say just out loud in front of other people, like this is what I want to, to create in the world. And they're willing to back you up. They're like, yeah, I want that in the world too. Um, and we all agree this is something worth putting our energy towards. That's a huge first step um, yes. to, to making it happen. Yeah, 
Well, and it, what you're doing is you're you're activating the synergy of multiple people, right? Because you know you put two or more people together doing energy work in the same direction. It's not additive. It's multiplicative. It's it's exponential in in many cases. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it, it, there's I see so many reasons why that works for you. <laughs> like, like it just makes perfect sense to me. So. That's a cool concept, though. It's great that you you figured that out and expanded the process. That's, but this is how it happens, right? That's yeah. What we were talking yeah. About. So, but you, you've got um, the way that you and I ended up talking is uh, we're we're part of a, a Facebook group that you know Will from the skeptical metaphysician introduced us, and um, and you know you were talking on there about telepathy. So tell me a little bit more about how you got involved with telepathy and first first define it for people from your perspective, how it how it works, you know, what what is telepathy, how does it work? And then, you know, tell us how you got involved with it. Yeah, and I group telepathy in a larger class of skills which which I called non-local awareness, which is kind of the scientific term. Um, because I, you know, first dug into the scientific literature, but so this would include like clairvoyance, intuition, remote viewing, telepathy, psychic skills. They're all basically accessing the same <clears throat> same thing, which is information that's not um, not part of your physical body. So telepathy would be specifically communication with another uh, person, another being, another consciousness unit. Um, and whereas um, remote viewing is, for example, accessing information about a place or a time that's remote from you. But I really see them as, as once you start to learn to get this type of information, you can apply it across these different areas. And I, I met um, my collaborator, the person I co-facilitate with, is an animal communicator from Denmark, Dita Young. She's also in our in our group, Kelly. And um, <clears throat> she said, "I can teach you. Uh, I can teach you animal telepathy in a couple minutes." I was like, "Really?" <clears throat> and so she, we did it live on Instagram. And she, what she would do is she would hold up these pictures of horses, and she, she would have me look look in the eyes of the picture of the horse to establish the connection, and then she would say, okay, give me a medical diagnosis of this horse. Give me its medical history and its personality profile and, you know, how it likes to be trained as a, as a jumping horse or, and just go through all this. And then she, she knew the, um, the medical history of these animals and she could confirm like, yep, you're 90, 90% 90 correct, accurate. <clears throat> here's what you, here's what you got right. Here's what you missed. And the really cool thing is that, you know, when you have something you're, you're practicing, you can get feedback. Like if you have a known medical history or if you're, if you're remote viewing something in the other room in a sealed envelope, right, for example, then you can go and check. You can get feedback. How accurate were you? Did you get all the elements of the photograph that you were trying to view? Or, you know, did you get all the elements of someone's medical history? So it's actually a trainable skill that you can slowly improve over time uh, with both your accuracy and, and how much total information you're able to pull when you do this. Well, and I, I find also that a lot of it's about how much you believe you can do, right? Because that, that's why the proof is so important because you'll limit your ability to see or you'll, you won't say everything you see or you'll hold back or you'll hem and haw or you'll modify or whatever because you're not sure that you're getting it right and so the more proof you get the faster you get proof and and a, and a book of proof to sort of look at and say oh yeah i guess mm -hmm. that does work the faster you believe it and then your belief will fuel a greater level of skill so. yeah exactly it's and de determining you know like how you get some information when you're when you're viewing something and then the question for a lot of people becomes can i trust this information am i making it up is it 
my imagination? Is it my ego? And there's your, you know, beginners overlay their expectations to some degree on what's happening. And so the, the training process is um, partly about learning how the information arrives. Are you the type of person that gets visual or auditory or, you know, other just ambiance sense information? Um, and so this that has been fascinating for me, like as we've run this training program, just seeing how different people, you know, because some people are like, I can't get any visual information, but I but I know that there's you know, I know there's mud involved or I know there's, you know, people arguing or whatever, whatever it might be, but I can't see it. Yeah. Now, when you're starting out, do you, because I'm, I'm rather, I'm very new in the, in, in the spiritual woo-woo world, right? Kelly's been doing this many, many moons, right? I haven't. So, um, so as I'm learning, um, I've taken Reiki um, I'm a level two Reiki and um, I do I try and do different things so I'm trying to build my intuition and work on that um, and so I'll find different you know meditations that I'll say here's how to open your third eye here's how to do this here's how to you know connect with the other with the spirit guides and all of that what do you find is um, from a stu- you know beginner student um, into say intermediate student that would help them to develop these. Is there certain things that you found that works? Well, one thing we do is we just do this sort of quick little induction guided meditation just to open up the chakras, right? Just to open up the your field to be porous and receptive to information external to you. And, um, you know, the way we do it is we sort of just visualize one by one, sort of opening a, a doorway or a gate in front of the chakra, um, which we then close down after we're done with the process. Um, but that... <laughs> you don't want to leave the door open. Been there, done that. Don't do that. Now I'm like, I forgot to do that. No wonder I'm like spazzing out. <laughs> you start start to hear extra people talking. Um, but but once you do start this practice, you do end up picking up a lot of, you know, random people's thoughts. That was one of our big feedbacks uh, from people that went through our course was um, I have a lot more precognition and I can hear people when I go to the store, I can, you know, hear what people are thinking now. And so there's a there's an element of just learning to um, to be in charge of how much you're you're receiving, um, but but yeah, in that feedback, um, testing yourself, right? Doing uh, just playing playing with it. Uh, what am I thinking, right? What animal am I thinking of right now? Or what kind of car am I thinking of? And seeing if you can get bits of information. Or I'm thinking of a location. I'm sending you a specific location. Do you notice anything about it? Or are you getting anything? And just really um, allowing yourself to say, if even if it sounds silly or like maybe you thought of it yourself, you just just say whatever comes, and and then you can start to build that trust with your own uh, information gathering. So I have to ask. Um, when you said sending you a location, were you thinking Pacific Coast Highway in Santa Monica? I wasn't. I was thinking of, uh, first I was thinking of the Eiffel Tower, and then I was thinking of the pyramids. That's but weird. but those are... Pacific Coast Highway came from, because... <laughs> that was like, I was like, whoa, what was that? I don't even know, but yeah. Interesting. A, a lot of these locations we wouldn't use in a in a class setting because they're they're great examples to talk about, but we don't use them because there there's there's too much uh, awareness of them. Oh, okay. Ah, so, so so you don't want to use like the Mount Rushmore or something that's common. Well, you, common you could, right now? you could. It's um. They they found in the in the scientific research they found that places that had uh, a history of 
highly emotional experiences like churches or concert venues were much easier to find when trying to use remote viewing because there's something called uh, numinosity, which it, it seems to make them glow more in terms of the psychic signature. Um, so uh, really important world events are easier to find than you know run-of-the-mill events. And it's also easier to tune into information that's changing. So if you have something that's in flux of change, it's easier than something that's sort of static. Like a boat sailing is easier to find than a boat in harbor. Huh. That's very interesting. And I would think it would be the opposite. As what, it just something moving would be harder to track than something still, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's completely not right. <laughs> the fact that it's moving make so the if you think about it physically, we are attuned when looking for things. We we are attuned. Our our brains notice things in movement more than they notice things that are still, because yeah. the things in movement are the things that could be dangerous to us, right? And so it's not surprising that on an energetic level you would have this sort of same thing. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> so, um, and so that's that's something that could be the case uh, where that would draw your attention and, and make it easier. And the, the signature being brighter makes perfect sense because more people have invested more energy and especially more emotion, which is the most powerful form of energy. Um, into a specific place and therefore that place starts to hold that energy and its morphic field gets stronger and therefore it is more visible and more it's brighter right so we talked about this before when we talked about how you show up on the astral when you first start to to get conscious of this stuff and that you get brighter and things notice you more it's the same idea only with buildings yeah okay so and we found that um, animals notice notice us more and try to come and communicate more after people go through our telepathy program, um, which has a we do a we do one class on animal communication and um, but now dogs come up to me they come up to other people all the time and they just like want to have us be their confidant or, or you know solve their problems for them. Like, Hey, nobody else is really listening to me. Can you help me out with this thing? And so, you know, you get dogs like really staring, staring you up good to, to try to be their, their voice. Are you getting ghosts too? Or is that not part of the training? I, we, uh, we don't include the sort of the mediumship aspect, but it, you could, uh, you, you know, it's the same. Again, I sort of lump that, together but i haven't personally experienced that i've had a, a bit more active dream time since i started um, paying attention but again it's really um it enriches one thing enriches the other like once you start being present i think it has to do with presence like you, if you're no noticing subtle details in your telepathy then you're also noticing them in your dream time, but you're also noticing them when you go for a walk outside, right? You're just appreciating like the nuance of the world or whatever reality your attention is on. Um, you just start to see the richness more. Well, and, and this is also why people who come from traumatic environments do better at energy work and magic is because they're already hyper aware and hyper present a lot. Even if they, their brains take them off in other places, they know how to be hyper-present. And so that hyper-presence is, is a building block from which you build the mm. rest of the work that you do. And so that's why people from traumatic backgrounds do so well in this work. Um, but it is also why you have to do a lot of healing work to, to really get the be benefit of it. Because if you don't do the healing, then the blah, 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 in your brain that comes from the trauma will out, out scream the, the, subtle, uh, the subtlety of the messages that you're getting on the energetic. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting dynamic. So 
Okay, Derek, so we started talking about telepathy, and then you mentioned that there's a course, so you, you got to tell people where it is and how to find it, because I know, I can hear people right now going, ooh, I get to learn to telepathy? I need to know. I need to know. How do I take that course? I can hear it. And, and, and you know, the, yeah, so you just got to tell people. So where, where do they find this course? When are you doing it next? So that they know. Yeah, we, so we will be running it for the second time this spring. Uh, finalizing the dates now, but it will be in April and May of 23. And so we'll cover telepathy, animal communication, plant communication, remote viewing, and um, sort of general clairvoyance, um, you know, just getting generalized guidance. And uh, we had a 100% success rate our first time through. So it's very, very exciting. Everybody, you know, reported that they got and it's not that you're getting a hundred percent accuracy, right? Like almost no, nobody can report accurately about anything, even if they saw it with right in front of them. Right. Um, but again, it's such a, it's a trainable skill, which is what I love about it as a, as a coach and a trainer. Um, you can, you can find out how you operate best within the framework, and then you can slowly get a higher confidence that you're getting accurate, useful information um, and eventually some people go and build careers, you know, whether it's um, like my collaborator, Dita, she works mostly with animals. She does, she works with animal actors or Olympic show jumping horses, or she'll, you know, the zoo, national zoo will call her and tell her, we've got a problem elephant. Can you come talk to this elephant, and, you know, get him to behave? Or you can, you know, there's a whole group of people that predict the future of crypto, right? There's a whole group of people that are that are using this to track uh, ahead of time the, the crypto market so that they can make money. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Again, helping people heal, you know, talking to What's spirit the... guys, deceased relatives, whatever. Yeah. Well, and, and um, you know, when you say, well, you're not 100% accurate, accurate, nobody is 100% accurate. And it's not just in psychic skills, it's in their ability to observe the environment. And you know, if you talk to a police officer and you talk to them about having done interviews of witnesses at a crime scene, they will tell you that they get 10 different people will give you 10 different stories. And it's because you know they were only focused on the stuff that they were focused on and, and they, mis they may misinterpret other things. You know, eyewitness accounts are one of the least reliable things in, in police work. And, um, but that's because, you know, we are limited by our ability to observe and by our attention. And so, you know, that's going to impact psychic skills as well as it does regular life, you know, just looking at something skills. So, so we actually do the same, yeah. Yeah. the same thing as the police do is where if we want to get information about something, we'll take a consensus. So we'll have, you know, 10 different people view, uh, what's in that box. Right. And then everyone says their own impression of what it is. And then we actually can put together a pretty good composite of what's really in the box. Yeah. Which is that whole concept of uh, crowdsourcing answers, right? That crowd, a crowdsourced answer will almost always exceed an expert answer if you get enough people in the crowd. And so that's another piece of the puzzle there, too, which is, and so the question you have to ask yourself when you're doing a consensus path is is the consensus being built by you know are you coming together with oh well these are the most common things and so therefore it must be what's true or is the consensus itself creating the reality right right and uh my my collaborator dita she she always would ask people like who are the people that think they have this wrong that you you think you're hearing everyone form this consensus of information and so you think you're wrong i want to hear what you have to say and a lot of times there's a huge piece that they have right that the consensus will have wrong so it's you know it's that's really important for building trust too yeah. with with yourself yeah yeah so it's it's very interesting from a, a creative perspective jewel you were going to say something mm -hmm. a minute ago do you remember what it was <laughs> Oh, I was going to ask him, um, the classes and all, are they on your website, uh, DerekLoudermilk.com? 
because we're, uh, we're going to include all that information in the show notes so that our audience can go find you. Yes, we'll we'll have that up soon, but I'll send you a separate uh, course page for this for this program. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll put a link direct to that page then. Yeah. In the show notes. So cool. Very good. And then one one other question I had real quick was, as you're learning the different healing techniques and all, do you find that say like your telepathy and all of the um, other things that you mentioned, those develop? The more you learn, the more that they develop, or, or is it more in, independent type of development? So you learn a healing technique, but that does not necessarily um, boost your clairvoyance. Yeah, there is a lot of benefit from one technique to another. There's, you know, these foundational skills like the how you process energy through your physical body, for example, is one foundational skill that sort of affects many different sub skills or techniques. Um, there's the breath, how you control your breath or utilize the breath. There's um, how you manage your attention and focus and awareness. Uh, so many of these are like foundational building blocks that then can be applied to learning one or another thing. Cool. All right. Well, I think that's all that we have time for this week, folks. Um, and Kelly, do you have a Kellyism for us this week? I do. The more you learn, the more you know. <laughs> Going old school. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right, folks, you heard her. I just want to remind everybody that Derek will be joining. He doesn't even know this yet. <laughs> He's going to be joining our Spirit Sherpa podcast Facebook group. Uh, so please check that out if you're not a member yet. But he will be in that group, and you can actually reach out to him and talk to him directly if you have any questions or anything like that. I do this because it makes it easier for, for people to find our guests. So most of the guests that have been on the show are in the, in, in the Facebook group, the Spirit Sherpa podcast Facebook group. So if, uh, if you ever have questions, you know, that's a great way to find people and reach out to them. Um, and, uh, you know, make sure you sign up for the mailing list so that you don't miss any of these podcasts or any of the weird TikToks that I post or, you know, or, uh, I've actually got, there's a, there's a cool, um, there's cool stuff coming out from my friends. I'm starting a, 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 a section called, you know, cool stuff my friends are doing. And so you may also learn about that and you won't find out about those things anywhere other than on the mailing list plus plus but wait starting, there's more but wait there's more starting immediately like right yesterday um if you're on the mailing list you also get invited to come on to these recordings live and so if you wanted to ask questions in the moment you could do that we've just changed to a new platform and it's letting us do this now and we're super excited about it. So if you want to come on and you'll get early access to the podcasts because we're recording them in advance. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you'll be on the show and the show won't drop for anybody else for several weeks. Uh, so you'll get early access to the podcast and you get to ask your questions in real time. So, uh, you know, that's pretty cool, right? So that is um, cool. Yeah, and the only way you're going to get to do that is if you're on the mailing list because we don't tell anybody else what our schedule is for recording. So <laughs> there's no other way to do it. So uh -huh. get on the mailing list. It's get on cool. the mailing list. Yes. And uh, hit the, hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you love us. If you, Even if you don't, give us a thumbs up too. Because <laughs> <So. laughs> that, that, helps, that helps us in our ratings. Yes. Yes, and you get on the mailing list by going to kellysparta.com. And uh, you can either download the free Boundaries for Empaths download or take the shadow work quiz at the top or at the very bottom. There is it just to join the mailing list. So your call how you want to do it. That'll work. All right, well, that is all that we have time for this week, folks. So tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules, here with Kelly and Derek, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, y'all. Bye. Bye-bye.